What is up YouTube and welcome to my latest video. As you can see, this is not my usual motor vlog style video, but it is motorcycle related, so please stick around. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, and if you're a regular, welcome back. So today's topic is a little bit on the dark side, so while I would normally recommend a nice cup of tea, I think today we need something a bit stronger. Ah, all right, roll that intro. Right then, ladies and gentlemen, so this is the story of John Cantley, otherwise known as Sonic from Superbikes magazine, and now known for being a hostage of ISIS in Syria, possibly. So a bit of a background, um, back in the late 90s, when I was a whippersnapper hooning around Oxfordshire on my VFR 400, I was a big fan of all the motorcycle magazines, fast bikes and superbikes being my favorites. The fast uh, superbikes magazine had a journal called John Cantley, who went by the nickname of Sonic the Hedgehog. He was a bit of a legend and almost every issue of the magazine had Sonic doing massive wheelies on the front cover. So I think in 98 or 99, my memory's a bit fuzzy, uh, I met John at a bike show, probably at the NEC in London. Um, anyway, I talked to him for about five or 10 minutes and found him to be a really nice guy. I was expecting more of a, a hooligan, but he was actually really well spoken. I remember at the time thinking he was quite posh. So anyway, skip forward to a few years ago, I was doing some strolling down memory lane and decided to see if uh, he was on Facebook. So I typed his name in, the first group that came up was uh, Free John Cantley. So I was intrigued and wondered you know, what, what this is all about, started doing a bit of reading and research on him. And I found out that after his stint with all the motorcycle magazines, he became a travel correspondent for a couple of the lads mags like FHM, stuff like that. And then after that, he became a war correspondent. So 2012, um, there was an American journalist who was beheaded, James Foley. Now, John and James were working together at the time when they were kidnapped. And what they were working on was actually a documentary about the first time that they got kidnapped, because this is the second time. Only a few months before this had happened, they'd already been kidnapped and had escaped. So basically after the beheading of uh, James Foley and the, the kidnapping in general, just things went quiet. Then in 2014, ISIS, or ISIL, or IS, whatever the f they're called these days, released a video series called Lend Me Your Ears where John was the main presenter. You can see him here in his uh, orange overalls, like a, a prisoner in the, in the US. So the first video is he speaks really critically about the US and the UK's policy regarding hostages, i.e. Uh, not paying a ransom. And he says things like, my country has abandoned me. But some of the other things he says, you know, he's talking about the foreign policy regarding the Middle East and the war on terror. You can tell that he's been forced to say it, you know, his mannerisms and the, the just, you can just tell that he, he's faking it. Obviously, they were coercing him into saying these things. Um, then, as the videos go on, you can see his condition gradually getting worse. He looks very, you can see here, he looks so gaunt and thin and quite sickly looking. And so, obviously, everyone thought the worst. Um, then, after this, his appearance sort of changed as well. He looks a bit more Muslim, I think. They may probably made, made him dye his hair and dye his beard, sort of a darker colour. Um, and then it, it sort of went quiet again. Then around 2015, another video came out, came out where he's actually riding a bike. Uh, he's got some kind of like security guy on the back or you know somebody making sure you can't run away probably. And then the way he talks seems a lot more natural. And then I started to worry, oh, maybe he's got Stockholm Syndrome and or maybe he's converted to Islam, something like that, I don't know. But it seemed like he was actually saying what he was actually thinking rather than before where it was quite obvious that he was being forced to say things. Excuse me. So basically, yeah, from that point on, from 2015 onwards, the kind of, uh, the, the trail went dead to some extent. 
Um, then towards the end of 2018, the SAS um, captured one of the British jihadis. Um, there was a group of these these bastards, four of them, who were called the Beatles, who were from London, but they were um, Muslim jihadis, and they were supposedly the worst of the worst. Um, it seems like where John was held, these four, these the Beatles were the guards. They made the uh, prisoners fight each other for fun. If they didn't fight, they would electrocute them, waterboard them, stuff like that. So really nasty nasty buses but from London so the newspapers at the time called them the Beatles and you know they said it's like London is killing Londoners so anyway this guy who was captured said that he had seen John recently so that was the end of 2018 and then after that the British government said that they've had new intelligence that uh, would point to the fact that John is still alive but as per the um, the rules, or you know, they couldn't they, they couldn't discuss an individual case. The only thing they could say is that they believe that he's alive, and they have a good idea where he is. But it's not a very good location for an extraction. It's something along those lines. Um, so yeah, it, after that. No, 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 no new news. So we really don't know if he's alive or not, or where he is, or what the story is. So my research kind of come to an end there as well. So if anyone has any new information or would like to leave a comment, please do. I always reply to my comments, so get down there and type something in. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, if anything new comes about, I will let you know. But yeah, it's kind of a a strange story but um, yeah he was when I was a, a 19 year old hoon he was uh, one of my one of my little heroes so yeah, it's a very pretty sad if he ends up getting killed over there for considering all the stuff that he's done for them to keep himself alive but uh, yeah that's the end of the video so if you enjoyed the video guys please let me know and I will hopefully be starting to do some live streams once or twice a month from now on so if anyone wants to join me on the live stream send me a message and we can hook it up all right guys see you in the next video peace